Defining the prototypical acting role for Harold Perrineau is difficult, if not damn near impossible. Was it Augustus Hill, the philosophical, always cool, wheelchair-bound inmate in HBO's violent, often, well, gross-out uh, prison drama Oz? Maybe it was the hapless Michael Dawson on Lost, who came and went from the show and storyline with such a dizzying plot twist that it seemed like the writers didn't quite know what to do with him. Or perhaps it will be his latest character, Detective Leo Banks, who, well, listen, listen to this clip. You want to tell me what that was with the subway? I don't know. You just stood there on the tracks. Oh, I fell and I got up. No, you stood watching the train come. Whatever. What was that? It's an aspirin, okay? You're giving me a headache. Look. Look, pal. My grandfather got killed by a Metro North train in 1967. He was 42 years old. When I was 15, my dad died cancer. He just turned 42. Two years later, my uncle drops dead. Heart attack. Guess how old he was. No smart aleck he answers. You want to know why I won't take this vest off? Why I wear flame retardant clothes and I put this antibacterial crap on my hands? Last month, I turned 42. So if you're trying to kill yourself, do me a favor. Don't do it when I'm around. I got enough bad juju already. Harold, welcome to Mr. Media. Well, oh, thanks a lot, Bob. It's good to be here. <laughs> and I do got a lot of bad juju, I got to tell you. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great clip. I think it really kind of captured uh, everything we need to know about Leo in the first exactly. episode. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's his. That's his. That's where we start off with Leo in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Leo seems like a guy who's got a lot on his mind. He's worried about a lot of things, huh? Yeah. Yeah. He. I mean, he. He really is. This is. This is one of those things when you know when I first looked at it, uh, on 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 you know on the onset it looked like oh that's really funny. But as I started to think about it some more, I realized like this guy has been thinking about this, you know, since he was 15 years old. You know what I mean? Like this has been building up for like you know 30 some odd years, and so like this is a it's a big scary year for him, and uh, and uh, and he's doing everything he can to sort of to break the spell, but his, uh, his partner is not being helpful. Not at all being helpful. <laughs> his partner is kind of impervious, and, and, and uh, Leo is kind of uh, anything but, it seems. Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. That's a, that's a great way to put it. He completely is. Nothing seems to happen to him no matter what the guy does. And, so, <laughs> and Leo um, is just waiting to get along. <laughs> um, the relationship... Uh, between Leo and uh, his partner, uh, Delahoy. Er Eric uh, Delahoy. This is played by uh, Adam Goldberg, of course. You know that. I just want to make sure everybody else knows that. It, it seems like it could develop into a very interesting um, byplay. Uh, can you tell us anything about their background together? What What's happened before we met them on screen last night? Well, that was a question that we actually had, you know, a lot about these guys because, you know, it's, we start at this very, very critical moment in their lives. And so the question has always been who have these guys been uh, before and you know we find out you know later in the series that they've been working together for eight years and they have a partnership that works and the reason their partnership works is because they're not necessarily looking for like conventional ways to figure things out and that and they play together and they play together well like that um, and so and so like right now there's something about like their timing that's that's really off and so they wind up looking Quite often, like you know, uh, like Ricky and Lucy, we were referenced as once, uh, and uh, <laughs> it's like they are—they are right now just in uh, in total non-contact. They bicker like you know an old married couple, uh, and so um, you know they—they they actually have to work through that and resolve it and still get things done because I think that they're the best partners for for each other that 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 exists in that squad. Well, a lot of people in in reviewing the show have made reference to. Uh, uh, Hill Street Blues, and it's it's not just a subtle. Oh, that shows a lot like Hill Street Blues. I mean, you and you and Goldberg are somewhat reminiscent of uh, Hill and Ranko from that show, particularly right. down to your character wearing a bulletproof vest for fear of being shot, which of course is what happened to Bobby Hill in the in the pilot of Hill Street Blues. Is there? Oh, you know, I didn't realize it, that. Yeah, I figured that's why you were wearing the <laughs> the vest. <laughs> you know what, um, Noah? You know Noah Hawley who. Who created our show? Um, 
you know, he's paid homage to a lot of different shows in our show. And, uh, and, uh, and some people have called it like we were ripping it off, but I was like, Dude, we're not ripping it off. We're like, some, these, some of these shows are great shows, like Hill Street Blues is, you know, really iconic and uh, and stuff like that. And so we're not copying the show. We're actually, you know, we're making a reference about it and then going on and doing our own show. I didn't actually realize that uh, Bobby had gotten shot in the, in the pilot episode of it. Yeah, the pilot episode. That's <laughs> him getting shot. I, I, as I recall, now it's been a while, but him getting shot sets in motion everything that you then learn about the uh, uh, the squad, the squad, and and everything that goes on, and and his partner, and there's guilt, and there's all kinds of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting that way. So I figured uh, with the similarities between your character and, and Goldberg's, and the fact that you're wearing this bulletproof vest and afraid of being shot, it, I figured it had to it had to be you know respectfully playing back to that in some way. Uh, you know, like I said, it might be making homage to it, but for us, it's like yeah. you know, Leo actually isn't shot. Like I said, it's something that's been playing in his head for years, and it actually starts to just get a little, you know, very slowly get a little uh, deeper and darker, and it just. It starts playing into like you know his own fears, and then how much actually he and his partner are are really connected. You know, uh, they they actually have to come through for each other, even when they don't really want to. Do you know what I mean? Like because you know Eric Delahoy has got his own things to deal with. The brain tumor is a very very serious issue on its own, and so um, and he's not talking about it, and so they eventually have to come through for each other. Um, uh, but it doesn't reveal a, a bunch about the the rest of the rest of the squad or anything like that. It's just it's just these two guys, and that's for that particular storyline. That's that's mm-hmm. how that works. Now, before we leave the Hill Street Blue thing, I, I've got to say, in terms of paying homage, there is that scene of a TV showing playing a TV show just happens playing to feature the... Bruce White from, exactly from Hill Street. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, what I'm saying. Like there are a lot of the, <laughs> like those things. I think that's really cool. Like that. That uh, you know that uh, Banks and Delahoy use the copy machine for the cat guys. Like Banks and Delahoy watch HBO. It's not like we're not moving it off. Like we watch HBO. We thought it was funny. I'm going to try that one. We tried it with the cat guy. Like he seemed like a safe enough dude to try it with. So and then when that didn't work, we poured you know hot sauce on him and threw him in a car. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was a it was a safe thing to use that from from uh, from the wire because the reality is unfortunately it's a great show. Not a lot of people saw it, so you know. Right. Um, right. But I think, and I think for us, like it's the cool thing that people who did see it go like, oh, like, like, oh, wow, that's really funny. That's from the wire, and you know what I mean. And so, like, that's a little inside, you know, for yeah. us folks who watched well, it. That's how I feel about it. So. Oh yeah, a little inside baseball stuff going on there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> What um, um, for people who who may not have seen the pilot last night? Mm-hmm. Um, what is what what are the unusuals? What is what does the name refer to? Um, the the name refers to a couple of things. There is there's a file uh, when in, in in precincts in New York uh, of cases that are that are unsolved and uh, that are strange. It's called the unusuals. It's just a file. They come and they collect them. These cases weren't solved and blah blah blah. They're the unusuals, and you get back to them. And um, it is also referring to, you know, the way that we go about our our lives, all of us, uh, in a very unusual way. Me wearing the vest all the time, Adam taking crazy chances, Casey Schrager, who's played by Amber Tamlin, sort of hiding the fact that she's this rich girl, you know, uh, Joshua Close, who plays Detective Cole, this Bible-beating, you know, gun-wearing cop in New York, in New York City, you know. it's a, He's really strange, and his partner, who is... You know who will crack your neck if she has to, uh, by, Mon- by Monique Kernan. Like, you know, they're 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 unusual in their um, in their approach to their work and their lives, and so that's what the, the name refers to. I have uh, one more really short clip I want to play. This is uh, this is Harold uh, in in the uh, pilot of uh, the Unusuals, and uh, the only thing I'm going to tell you is that he's talk he and he and Goldberg are. T- uh, their characters are talking to, uh, I think, a city councilman. A city so, uh, councilman, give, yes. <laughs> give, give a quick listen to this. This is Harold uh, in the pilot. If I may, I'll oh, go my best. Councilman, how long have you been cheating on your wife? What? Come on, this is your classic fatal attraction kind of maneuver, you know? I'm not having an affair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And then he throws it out. <laughs> I think it's really funny. 
I don't know. I th- Harold, I think that I think you're one of those guys that people would enjoy you reading the phone book. I don't know. Yeah, you know I, mean? I don't know, man. It's just, you know, the comedy part of it is really hard. Like as I listen to it, I listen to like ah, this is where I was I was insecure, and that's why you know the words aren't totally clear. But you know, it's a it's a it's a totally funny setup. You know what I mean? Like. You know, we're chasing this cat killer, and people notice that case, but we're chasing it because, you know, it's a councilman who calls in. And in New York or in other places, you, you know, you, you would extend an extra hand for, you know, councilmen and, and, and uh, uh, people who, you know, higher ups, as it were, you know, at, in, in the city. You do favors, and that's, and that's how it goes and stuff. So. That's why we're chasing the cat killer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great. It's a, it's, I don't want to give any more away. That, that's a fu- that's a funny thing. It shows. It definitely shows how uh, how much Leo enjoys his job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we we have to uh, people. Is, I am good yeah. Well, yeah. people, I think would kill me if I didn't bring up Lost. Um, Absolutely, bring up Lost. Awesome. Were you still involved in Lost when the un- unusuals came 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 to you, or was that after? No, no, I um. Uh, I, I, you, wow, the unusuals came like out of nowhere, actually. So um, I was finishing the last, the, my last season of Lost. I was literally going back and forth from Hawaii to L.A. because my wife was pregnant and she was about to have the baby. Um, hmm. uh, I finished the show. I came back. Two weeks later, we had the baby. The baby was there for about three weeks, and then uh, they were like, Hey, we've got this great show, The Unusuals. Do you want to come in and audition? I was like, really? Like, oh, okay. And then he told me that Adam Goldberg was going to be doing it. And so I went in. And then after my daughter was uh, eight weeks old, and I was already on a plane to uh, to New York filming The Unusuals. And so wow. they didn't have anything. I, I didn't have it while I was still doing Lost, but they, they came okay. really quickly. And were you, I, I touched on this earlier, and I don't know, so I'm just going to ask you, were you unhappy with the way your character was ultimately handled on Lost? I mean, the, the things that happened to Michael always seemed kind of random, and especially now that things are playing out toward the conclusion. Uh-huh. I, I, you know, the, the one thing I actually thought about Michael through, throughout the whole thing was like, like everybody had these secrets and they did so, so, some bad things. and uh, not, Well, maybe not everybody. Like Hurley didn't really do anything bad, but... He had a wacky secret, but Michael was actually, I thought, a guy who was trying to do the right thing. Do you know what I mean? His kid, his wife went away with the kid, and 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 then you know when she passed away, he went to get the kid, and, and so he was kind of doing, trying to do the right thing, and he got caught up in this whole thing. Now, you know, I, I made some comments uh, to your know, magazine, uh, uh, to like TV Guide uh, later, and people thought like, oh, he's pissed at them. And I, and, I, and I wasn't pissed at them. I'm not pissed at uh, the writers and Lost or anything. Um, I think they write a great show, and they're writing the show that they and the story that they want to tell. When I when I make comments about it, I was making comments as an audience person and as an African American audience person, and you mm-hmm. know, with my own sensitivities about it. And I would like to, would rather have seen Michael fight really hard to try to do the thing he set out to do, which was be the father to this kid. You know, yeah. I was a little disappointed that you know he was so bent about what he'd done to the the people in the island that he uh, he suddenly didn't want to be the father to his kid anymore. That's how I felt about it, and I thought it was also sort of like it was my social issues uh, at play there. Now I don't expect them to write toward my social issues. Um, I just, but I don't, but I, but I do say how I think, what I think about it, and 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 I didn't mean for them. For it to be construed like, oh, I hate them and I think they they mishandle black people or anything. It's like no, they're writing they're writing a really really great show. They're they're writing a show that's entertaining tons of people. I had a social issue that you know I have social issues about lots of things. You know, <laughs> I say something about basketball. It doesn't mean I think you know I hate the <laughs> NBA or something like that. You know what I mean? So that's well, and I. How that it, plays. In asking you, I didn't even know about those comments. I just knew from watching it that it just didn't seem to. It just didn't seem to mesh with who I think most people's idea of who Michael was, and yeah, I don't right. think he would have given up on his kid that that easily. Uh, I have to ask yeah, you. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to ask you one last thing. <clears throat> I know you have to go. We have a live web chat that accompanies these interviews, and uh, one of the uh, listeners there is asking, "Will you be returning to Lost at all? Or are you completely done?" Um, that I, I do not know. With Lost, as, a, as, as we all know, you <laughs> never know what happens there. And because I'm on an ABC show, I'm sure that we can work it out, like, you know, contractually. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, next season's their last season. I'm sure they're going to, you know, wrap things up. 
I, I hope that, you know, we get to see Michael at least one more time or see him and Walt or maybe from the beginning or anything. Because mm-hmm. I really love those, you know, the first characters that we met when we first were introduced to Lost. Um, mm-hmm. That's my own personal thing again. And uh, well, but I, I don't know if I'll be back. I don't I don't know at all. all right. But as far well, as I know, I, he's dead, dead. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? So is Locke. Um, <laughs> exactly. But, but even Ben seems surprised by that one. Um, right. Folks, <laughs> right. Uh, you can you can you can catch the unusuals. Uh, if, if, if you if you miss the pilot, it's up online at w. Uh, www.abc.com and don't miss uh, Harold uh, Perrineau, uh, Adam Goldberg, Amber Tamblin, lovely Amber Tamblin, and uh, Jeremy Renner in new episodes of The Unusuals airing every Wednesday night, I believe, on ABC. Absolutely. And uh, Harold, uh, it was wonderful to talk to you. Uh, love to have you back another time and thanks so much for your time and good luck with the new show. Thanks a lot, Bob. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right. Good talking to you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. And, folks, for more interviews with uh, TV actors, directors, producers, and screenwriters, surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with the men and women of Chuck, The Starter Wife, ER, uh, Worst Week, Castle, My Name is Earl, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and many more. Please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites. Whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, MySpace, Facebook, High Five, Tag, Bebo, Orchid, uh, Digital Journal, Podcast Pickle, Vox, uh, Pointer Online, iGoogle, Yahoo, Folio, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, or Odeo. And subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. That's A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Folks, I uh, always appreciate when you give up a little piece of your day to spend it with us. 